little bit of snow on the ground still. It was nice when we got up here earlier this morning. Really cold. And uh, got a little bit of snow runoff that's coming through this little creek. And uh, we're going to use the um, Camelback tactical pump again today and process some of this water. And uh, I love seeing stuff like this. Here we have one of man's greatest inventions. The all important litter. We'll take that out with us when we leave. But um, if you're out in the wild and you're stuck in the wilderness and you come across a little creek like this, um, things to keep in mind are uh, little sources of water like this also. Um, they supply nutrients of water to your your wild animals and uh, if you're going to set figure four deadfalls or snare traps and stuff like that you want to look around the creek area and find little paths that you can tell that the uh, the uh, mammals or uh, animals have been using coming back and forth and then set your traps already noticed quite a few little spots around here. There's some native trout up here in this area and uh, just got done talking to uh, Mike, uh, this, uh, one of the uh, forest rangers up here that works on the Los Padres that we've known for a few years and uh, he was telling us that there's a 600 pound bear up here and, uh, and then there's a 400 pounder who has a, a 300 pound cub and uh, she's right in our area right now so uh, we're going to keep a watchful eye out for her and uh, get you guys some more video. This tree is dead. It's been infested by the bark beetle. Its secondary trunk has already fallen. Main trunk has been split. And there's nothing living on it. It's now a tomahawk target. The uh, Cold Steel Trail Boss. This is my first time throwing the Trail Boss. No. First time throwing. First time throwing. Be aware of yours. I'm not an experienced tomahawk thrower. I'm going to stand if, over here. See if I can't do this. First try? No good. Well, at least you did hit the tree. Yeah. That's good. Let's try that again. Now, in a combat situation, if that was somebody's head, yeah, it'd be split it's, still, it'd still hurt like... Alright, here we go. That was two spins. Maybe I'll step a little bit closer and try to get one spin. See, like a typical Marine, you're always trying to excel. Isn't that right? Hey, always. Let me see this thing. Yeah, why don't you give it a shot? I'll trade you. Alright. How far away would you say you are? 15 feet. 15 feet. Well, the blade hit. And that wood is rotten. Yes, it is. Let's try this one more time. Very nice. You didn't have much power behind that, but it, uh, not at all. Definitely stuck in there pretty good. And you know, like I said, for all you tree hugging, hippy skippy people, I want you to see what your uh, your uh, voting does. You see, by limiting what the Forest Service can do in taking out trees, you allow trees like this one to continue to rot in the forest, and then the bugs leave this tree and they go on to. The healthier trees that are standing in this grove and they kill them out and then the forest dies because you're that way so Chappie's using the uh, cold steel trail boss right now it's working on this tree and uh, we've brought down trees about this size before with the trail boss and it did a great job Chappie how's it looking from your side of the tree here 
just don't we'll try to stay out of his radius here. But he hasn't been chopping for very long before I turn on the camera here, so uh thing makes pretty good work. Okay, you gotta make sure when it pops. You don't want it to pop back at you. Oh, there it goes, here it goes. Keep going, go, go. There it goes, look out, look out. Look. Perfect. Right where I told you I wanted it. It's exactly where you wanted it. Did you tape it? Yes, I did. Woo! <laughs> Good time. Oh! Good time. I need my Metamucil. <laughs> now this was not a thin tree. And this tree was processed 99% by the cold steel. Is this a trail hawk? Trail boss. Trail boss. And uh, this tree is it was a hard tree. It uh, it almost kicked my butt, but it's down. We're gonna clean the limbs off it, set them off to the side, and uh, leave it for somebody else to use as firewood in the future. So, I'll show you more video in a bit. So we're gonna you know, get some more use out of the uh, the newest member of our family here. This, this two two handed. Uh, Kukri machete. I'm going to start from the what was the bottom of the tree and work my way towards the top just because that's the way the, the branches are angled, the way I can get, get at them, get at the base of them better. So I'm just going to go to town here and... Uh... You know, every once in a while when I'm standing in a really beautiful place, looking up into the mountains, enjoying the pristine view of the snow on the hills, the clouds coming in, the blue sky, the nice... 32 degree or 40 degree breeze blowing because of the wind chill factor. I'm often reminded why it's good to be me, the lead instructor to new survival skills. One of those reasons is right over there. The monkey's doing all the work. Oh, oh is that right? <laughs> you did your fair share on the main trunk there. Yes. That's right. Besides, I brought... I'm, I'm playing with your new toy. Well, actually, it's not my new toy, it's the new NSS toy. It belongs to all of the instructors. How are you liking that thing? I'm digging it. You know, some of these heavier branches, it doesn't cut into it quite as easily. Partially because a lot of them are, are kind of springy. Look at the size of this thing. Brandon just walloped with that trail boss. It's nice. But uh, dude, I really like this thing. I mean, the whole getting through the, the small brush or clearing like the smaller branch stuff. I mean a lot of what's <laughs> a lot of a lot of this what used to be out here was this size and, and maybe from there down and I just basically waded into it swinging this thing like a madman made, you know, made sure that the, the guys were clear of me outside of my radius and I just went into it just swinging like crazy and this, this stuff just started flying left and right until I got down to what I have here um, and then this is the stuff that's taking a little bit more work to get to but uh, this thing, I'm really liking it. You can get, use it for clearing brush, clear yourself a path, uh, collect a lot of uh, small branches that you can use for firewood, making a shelter, whatever. It's, it's handy. Uh, I, mean, I might have to get one to keep in my own uh, collection. Yes. Um, I'm quickly falling in love. Step back for a minute, Matt. Do it. Once again, Cold Steel Trail Boss. How big would you say that branch is? That's yeah. at least three inch in diameter. Three inch diameter branch. Yep. You there you more. go. Bam. Trail boss. Trail boss. Now, like we said, man, the trail boss, uh, it took this down. So, for you tree hugging, hippie skippy people again, let us remind you this tree's already dead. It's not beneficial to the forest in any way, shape, or form. It's compost. It's, it is beneficial now because it's on the ground and, and it can start breaking down to its natural form and maybe adding some much needed nutrients to the environment around it but uh, it's good stuff good stuff and you know just to reiterate Uncle Bruce on what Matt said even though he went into this swinging like a madman he uh, wasn't going ape nuts and we are paying attention to where our hands toes feet and legs are at all times <laughs> so we just wanted to make sure you knew that 
Hey, Mike just went by and didn't even stop. No, he looked and... Like, yeah, when, he, he like, looked. He just, they just saved me some work. Yeah. <laughs> is what he said. I'm surprised you didn't stop and tell us to go take the other three trees down. All right, hey, as long as you're here. Hey, if you're bored. So we still got some hiking to do there, buddy. <laughs> See, this is what happens when your backyard, your, your area of operation that you come into happens to be an area that you used to work in as a wildland firefighter. Um, you, you wind up... You wind up looking at the forest and remembering that it is your home. This is this is my backyard. This is where I come to. This is where I want to bring people and and yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Like Matt just said, we're just backyard survivalists. That's it. And uh, you know, I mean, come on, look at my backyard. It's awesome. And uh, when we see stuff that needs to be cleaned up, we take care of it, and then we go about our day. It's uh, twelve thirty. And uh, we still have class and a six mile hike to do after we process this tree. And we're not going to leave it just the way it is. It'll all be cut and dispersed. And uh, people will be able to use it as firewood in the future. So um, if you're not doing your part in the environment to, to help clean it up, then don't talk smack about those who do. And uh, when you go out into the wild, make sure if you pack it in, you pack it out. That means every single solitary plastic bag, baby diaper, a trash bag, plastic container, or aluminum soda can. We don't want to pick up your trash. We don't leave ours for you to pick up. Look, Ma. Look what the Marine can do. Yeah, they give us muscles for something. <laughs> some... some Prime Accord would be awfully nice right about now. You know, we could just candy cane that whole log from the top to the bottom and give it one good blast with some Prime Accord and it would just split it up into usable pieces. Chunks of the can bark. Yeah. Uh, nice shot! You like that? I did. It was almost 3D, dude, because, you know, the, the chip came up and got me right in the glasses. Woo! Felt like I was at Disneyland. I'm telling you, if you have to go in the backwoods, this is definitely a tool to carry with you. No joke. It's more compact than some of the other ones that a lot of the guys in the fire crew carry, but yeah. definitely just as effective. Hey, like I said, I, m I missed my Pulaski while I was swinging at this tree because my Pulaski has a longer arm or a longer length and uh, you get a, a, a longer stroke on it, but uh, this trail boss is is like Matt said, we've used it here in the bush uh, when we've done training classes before and uh, we've used it to process a lot of these dead trees up here in the forest and, uh, and it works. It works great. So, Matt, what you got there? Well, I've got your pocket saw. I, did, I didn't get mine out of, my, out of the uh, kit here. But, uh... Hey, let's show this to the people right here. This is not a cold steel product. I believe this one is uh, Gerber pocket saw. I might be wrong on that, but we've used this to process a few trees in the past and uh, it works perfectly. And Matt, you going to take care of that? Yeah, I'm going to take some of the swings and down that are kind of a pain to be swinging at. Yeah. And plus it's not safe to be swinging at these limbs because they're, what this is, is part of a corral and this is a hitching post. And as you can see, because this tree died, part of it died and fell over onto the hitching post. So we're going to lighten some of this load because it goes up into the other tree by taking out some of these lower limbs with the pocket saw and then we'll clear this away. So I'll let you guys see what uh, what Matt's got going on here with this thing. Basically you just wrap it around your, your limb or your trunk, whatever you want to do with the teeth inward. Grab these two strap handles and just uh, start alternating. This, this works the fastest with two people uh, working it, but uh, I mean you can use it single-handedly. Here, let's show them what it looks like with two hands. Here it goes. You ready? You ready? See how far it's already gotten, too. Yep. You ready? Let's do this. My pull. Okay, we're almost done already. Watch your legs. All right, it's pinched. Brandon, give it a tug. There you go. Damn, there we went. Look how clean that cut is, too. So, would you recommend that since we both carry those in our Big time. EDCs? Having, having used it a few times now. Uh, it's such it saves so much time if you got if you got a partner to work with you on it.